never be done building my wash bay. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna hook up one of our new X-Factor power washers right on this block wall behind me. I'm gonna put a real deal valve to it, uh, but most exciting part is gonna be this giant wall-mounted ceiling boom. So it's gonna extend off this beam behind me, up behind me on the wall, right up where those beer cans are. No, I don't even think you can see it. Right up there. So my power washer is gonna go right here on the wall and then I'm gonna put that stainless steel swivel right underneath it so we have options to go further if we wanna go anywhere else in the room where the boom can't reach. But the boom will be up there, it'll fold flat against that giant beam up there and when we wanna use it, it'll swivel out to the center and then it'll have a ceiling boom from there. So it's gonna be super cool. But yeah, check this thing out, this thing is crazy. Fully stainless steel. So this is kind of how it'll look up on the wall. So this over here is the mount. This thing is gonna go on first. This pin slides through this sleeve here. Uh, once you mount this, then you can bring this up and slip it in super easily. So I have to get this whole pattern up into the beam up above and bolt this thing down like crazy. Once that's in place, we put the first extension on. We have this extra, it's like five foot extension that bolts on right here. All the nuts and bolts are included. They're all stainless, which is cool. And then um, once that's in place, the ceiling boom will mount to the end of the extension and then swivel 360 degrees from there. So it's gonna be really, really cool to see this thing in action. This is the stainless steel floor mounted swivel that I'm gonna put right over here underneath the power washer. I'm gonna mount one of my real deal valves right here on the face of this beam and it's gonna supply both the real and the ceiling boom. So I'll have options and it'll give soap to either one of them and I can just choose which gun I want. Now this thing I'm super excited about, this is the seven and a half horse wall mounted X Factor. These pressure sensors operate a time delay off relay so when you release the trigger, it'll turn itself off and it's a giant seven and a half horse motor. So this thing's gonna run 3,000 at 3.5. So it's a big machine, this thing's gonna crank. Nice general pump and also we spec'd out an hour meter so that you know how many pump hours there are so you know when to do your oil changes and whatnot. Very nice design, very proud of it, cool logo. Oh my God, it gets hotter as you get higher. Delicately remove the collection. This is a thing of beauty. Look at these welds, man. Oh my God, so nice. So I'm gonna hang this up here. And unfortunately, I just realized it's not gonna work out for me because I've got to drop a pin in here. Looks like I'm gonna have to attach the first extension arm and then put this on. But I can at least get my whole pattern in. We don't want to make sure this thing is dead nuts level this way. We don't want it to like kind of want to fall to one side or the other. Oh man, I got a couple holes that line up. That's good news. Level up. Apple says it's good. Now for the miserable part. I hate this. Yeah, drilling's not gonna work out. I'm just gonna do this. It's gonna be gorgeous, I swear. Right, so this is the main carrying beam right here. This plate goes around this, and then this piece goes right here, this piece goes right here, and this piece slides through the top. So let me see if I can get this on here real quick. I should mention, I'm not really sure about the orientation. This is the top. To me, this rubber piece makes sense to keep any junk from falling into that bearing, so I have it on the top. The instructions said nothing about this because they probably figured guys like me wouldn't read them anyway. So, here we go. <laughs> yeah! Now right, let's go do the hard part alone. So with this first extension in place, I'm now gonna put my second extension on here. It's gonna bring it out another five feet, so it's gonna come just past the center of my wash bay, which is what I want. I want it to kind of be able to be at an angle, but still be centered. That way I'll have the best reach. There's this flared connection in between 
these two plates that you have to mend before you put them together. So um, my plan is to uh, set this upright. I'm gonna benefit from having my scissor lift kind of like in place right here so that it's keeping me level. It might be easier to do this on the ground generally, but it's too late now. The right size wrenches are gonna be a three quarter inch for the other side of the fitting here and for the bigger uh, side of the flare fitting a 7 8 will do it. But we shall see how this goes. I think it's gonna be very uh, tricky. I'll tell you what, Masmatic makes some nice stuff. They, uh, they really have a lot of fit and finish to their products. Real nice materials, nice welds. I'm very impressed with this piece. I think it's gonna add a lot to the wash bay. And the whole perk of this thing will be it'll allow me to go all the way around a big rig. Not with a trailer necessarily, but if it's a bobtail, I'll be able to reach the whole thing in one continuous motion. Just gonna let me work, work a lot faster. And uh, I think I'll be able to start doing timed videos with our touchless washes and just see how fast we can do it, you know? Oh yeah, it's gonna be bigger. I should throw some Loctite on this thing. I don't ever wanna have to do this again. It's a compression fitting, so it shouldn't need this, but it's just a little extra. Oh, I got it. The most precarious thing I've ever done. One thing that I'll show you after this is the, on the other side of this, there's sort of a 90 that bends, it's gotta aim straight down and then back into the ceiling boom portion of this whole thing. So I've gotta make sure that I angle that right, right off the bat. I picked the hottest day of the year to do all this. So I've got the ceiling boom portion and I'm, I'm just gonna lift it right up to where it goes. But there's a port right here that you're gonna wanna plug and it comes with these adapters. This comes in the side and it comes with this plug that you put right here. However, I have every conceivable hex key known to American men. Metric and SAE or whatever. I can't find one that fits this, so. Forget that, we're gonna use like a normal, normal one. It'll fit a nice normal quarter inch hex key. But you gotta plug this hole or else when you go to fire it up, the water will spray out between these two plates. So that's important. The reason they have this hole on there is just for, um, for like if you have a, a normal ceiling mount and you wanna flush mount the hoses in the ceiling so you don't see them at all, which is a nice touch. Let me just thread this right in. It's important that this plug be flush with this plate though. There's no room for it to stick out. You gotta make sure it's not protruding at all. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never done this before, but I have a feeling that I'm right. I don't want that to ever leak. Me. This is gonna be pretty cool. These are normally used in like self-serve bays at car washes, but normally just this ceiling boom portion, not the extender portion. What's nice about this extension is it gives me reach long ways, so I can tackle huge things. I mean, it's designed for trucks. Wow. Whoa. Yep, so it's the dumb size that nobody has. It must be like seven millimeter, and all of my hex key kits jump from six to eight. Ah. Well, I have a backup. I hate to hack this like this, but we'll get it close and then let Loctite take it from there. So yeah, when you attach these plates together, like you wanna make sure this port is sticking out this way because that's where this has to come around to. Well, at least if these fittings leak, they'll be right here. Hopefully none of them anywhere else leak. So this was the fittings that I was working on earlier, just so you can see what I was up against here. When you attach that seam in the middle over there at the extension, you're gonna need to make sure that this, this is oriented straight down. Because once you tighten that flare in the fitting in the middle, where this is, is where it is. And then I did have to get this plate up over this and then slide it over to get these bolts in. I gotta figure out how long my whip is. So this comfort hose is, uh, Jesus, he's attacking me. This comfort hose is 16 feet long, and I don't know if that's gonna be long enough, so I might put a jumper hose on this. This is also a high pressure swivel right here, so that's kinda nice, so the hose is gonna be really flexible. But let me see how long this hose is, and then I'll see if I need a jumper. If I do, I might just need like a four foot hydraulic hose here to get me down to the ground a little closer. That might be okay. I'm, I'm gonna try it out. Go down on ground level and see what we got. Yeah, right, let's get down before this thing comes back to get me. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe I own one of these things. Look at this thing. Crazy. What's nice about these comfort hoses is they're like an extension cord. Three eighths technically, but they're very, very compact and super flexible and light, so you don't really notice them too much. All right, so I got everything ready with the boom up there. That thing's 100%. 
And now I just gotta hook up my X-Factor power washer right here on the wall. Unit strut here, I'm gonna use this stuff to mount to because it gives me a bunch of places to screw in and then that way those four mounting holes on here will be really well supported. Look at that. Now all I gotta do is make up my plug in. These come with a bare wire in because you know we don't know what kind of plug you might have in there. Uh, I have my electrician run this 50 amp 220 line here, so I've got the corresponding plug. I'm just gonna wire that in. Okay, so I got my water hose in place. I brought it over from the reel. Straight down, nice and clean. So I'm gonna cut this and put a new barb on the end so it's the perfect length. And then one thing, these machines come with the oil in the pump. So they come with a cap that's sealed, but you want to switch it out for the included vented cap. This cap allows the uh, crankcase to kind of breathe a little bit. So make sure you put this on before you run it. So I'm going to use my real deal valve so I can inject my two steps here because the whole goal of this system is to see how fast I can do a wash. The ceiling boom is going to let me rip all the way around a vehicle in one pass. Switch this lever to the second step and then go over it with the second pass and then rinse. So like this should really be a huge time saver. It comes with this mounting block. I want to put this nice and centered right around here and this thing will live right on the face of that. So the real deal valves come with a 10 foot jumper hose and that's to get you from the outlet of the power washer into the inlet of this valve. So I'm gonna run this right behind the machine, nice and clean. Yeah, so I've cut off the end of this garden hose and I have just a new garden hose fitting to put on here. I just like to keep everything real clean. This is an Odeker clamp. This is a real nice way to crimp a hose end on. It's just nice and clean, holds on really good. So you take these things right here, squeeze them on there. Oh yeah. That's a size 25 Odeker. And I believe this is half inch garden hose. This 25 foot hose is gonna go from the outlet of the real deal up to the ceiling boom. I'm gonna run that right now. I get these hooks off Amazon. They're just like garage hooks. But they look nice and they give a nice home for the gallons up off the floor. These are kind of an interesting option that I like to use here. We don't normally include these with our kits, but it's a nice cap for the bottles so that they stay kind of closed. So I'm just putting these right on the end of the pickup tubes. And then just go right in here like this. Yeah, let's see if this thing works. This thing should time down in a few seconds. It has a 15 second time to lay off. There we go. And that's what's nice, because otherwise the pump would overheat if you left it idling like that. Step one, we'll try this out. What's nice about this lens is you just twist this to turn on the foamer. And then to go back to rinse, you just twist it the other way again. So I got this little 100 foot Steel Eagle stainless steel reel and I already drilled out the holes. These are the anchors for the floor for the concrete. I wanted to put maybe an undercarriage washer on this thing or just have the reach for this machine to go 100 feet away from where it is so that it's not limited to just that ceiling boom. I always put the swiveling side on the reel because you're going to need to be able to turn that there. The other side is going to have a high pressure swivel on the gun anyway. So I got it all installed and I've decided that this is the single worst hose reel I've ever worked with and I want it gone. This is the problem. This is like horrible welding. 
It's welded on crooked. The port for the hose, you can't tie a hose onto it. The hose sticks straight out into this barrel and it can't make that kind of a turn. I don't really like having these extra fittings here. At the same time, the hose starts to chafe. Even if you could get into that port, it would chafe on this this lock, but the final clincher is that the entire face of the thing is welded on crooked. I can't handle that. This is going bye-bye. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm switching over to Realcraft. This is their, their swiveling base for the spring-loaded reels. So this will be kind of nice. It'll be the same kind of reel that I have on the machine at the back there. So here it is. Let's try this one out. Yeah, now we're talking. Look at that. Oh, this is so much better made, it's absurd. Stainless half-inch hardware here to bolt them together. Oh, this is so nice. So this does not swivel a full, a full 360 degrees because your supply hose would get all tangled up. So it has a sort of stopper at that point. Yeah. So I'm using these giant half-inch wedge anchors to go into the floor. These will hold it down for sure. Crazy nice diesel swivels going on this port right here. This U-bolt here is for the hose to grab onto the hose. You take this off so you can slip those through. So the hose is slipped through this U-bolt on the uh, inside of the barrel of this reel. So that's what you want. Through this spare lead, through that, through the thing on the reel, and now we're ready to spool this thing up. And actually this goes through like this, and you set the tension on this thing by spinning it forward several times, like five, six, ten times or whatever you want for, for a pull on the thing. You just kind of wind it like this while holding this against the rest of the hose. And then once you get it to where you want, then you stick this through and put your fall stop on here. And that'll set how much it's gonna pull. All right, so I have a four foot jumper here. This is gonna go from the port of this swivel right up to the power washer injector that I have up top here. I just made a T to splice this off so that um, you know I can put this after the real deal valve if I want to use the real deal valve on this for some reason or I can put it before the real deal valve and then put an ST160 or the silencer injector right here so I can run a third step of something else here like you know it could be anything like some kind of salt treatment or something because primarily this would be undercarriage wash will be the purpose of this thing. Half by 3 8 bushing to get into this half inch thread here. got a ball stop for this hose here so that once I tension this hose it'll bottom out. So before I put that on I'm going to tension this thing down. 